Welcome back. We're going to be continuing on with our series of videos about how to use Oracle SQL, running queries and finding information about some databases and tables that are working with it. Today we're going to be looking specifically at how we can run functions using existing table information. Again, we're going to be working with the um, Oracle by um, ex the SQL by example from uh, Alice Richard. The text for that is the database we'll be working with on that. And we're going to be working with so we can actually get some demonstrations of how we can go through and extract data out of that and do some fun queries with it. The first one we're going to start off right here is we can see how we can use a case statement. A case statement is not quite a function, but it's one of the things we'll use often in conjunction with functions, especially when we're looking at comparing values. And so you can see right here we have the select cou.description, as well as then we have our case clause, and then this is from course cou. So again, I'm using an alias on that. And a case is how is a conditional structure. It's how I can have different levels of evaluation inside a query so I can assign values to something. And so right here I have case when cou.cost is null and free, else uh, cou.cost. And they're in that as moolah, because again, whenever I do a grouping of that, I always use an as clause to make that happen. If I go ahead and try and play this though, oh no, I have an error. Inconsistent data types, expected um, char got number. Oh, yeah, because see right here, I'm using right here on my uh, then, it's a text, but else I'm using clu.cost. So remember, you have to make sure when you're working with a case that your thens are always, and your elses, of course, that your thens and else always have the same exact type. And since this is a string value right here, or a varchar, I have to make sure that this is also a varchar right here. And so I need to use the toChar function to make sure I can wrap that up. And so I'll go ahead and wrap uh, to, uh, to chart on cou.cost, and I'll replay that, and boom, there we go. And so I have the cost right here that's specified, otherwise it's going to be free. And so we have it so we can use that information. Again, one of the things I've talked about earlier is I always recommend using a case instead of the NVL. Case is a lot more powerful, allows us to do more customizations with information. And so I think it's a better option to use instead of simply MVL because I can actually format things to match what I want them to say, especially if I'm looking at changing values across type, which is something you may often need to do when you're trying to get rid of the null value and get information you actually want to use versus simply just random data. So that's something I really recommend doing. The next one I'm going to take a look at is we're going to do a little more complex series of query. We'll go delete that out. And we're going to do the same thing, approach here, but we're going to use a joined table so we can grab that as well as a demonstration. And so as you can see right here, I have a select clause of from, then join and on. And of course, when I'm on, it's always matching the primary key to the foreign key, making that path match. So I have a good equijoin happening right there. And as you can see, I have a two different case statements right here. My first one, it says when enr.final grade is null, then I'm going to do ungraded. And then when enr.final grade is not null, then graded. And so final grade itself is an int value, but because I'm using that case clause right here, it just puts automatically a text value because that's what I'm putting right here. So I have those two different whens. If there is another option, which there can't be because it just is null and is not null, I would have, a, have to have an else for that to handle that or just leave those values as null, which is ooh, yucky. Now that we have case when stu.firstname is less than k, do first half, stu.firstname is greater than n, second half, else, middle, and in that as nameish because hey, it's kind of silly and ridiculous and we can do that right here. And so we'll go ahead and we'll run this query right here. And as you can see, I'm not in the line. We'll run that query right here. We have 226 rows. And so I have my lovely student ID number right here. They're ungraded and their first name is in the first half of the alphabet. Oh, cool. We scroll up, we can see a middle, a first half, middle, first half, first half, first half, second half. Oh, there's some second half ones right there. And so we can see the way that we can run queries with that. And so you can have multiple different case statements. You can do some really cool things with that, as well as get information about that and go from there. Um, the last thing we want to do is one more uh, case statement example. And our last case statement example right here, we're going to use select cu.description. Then we have multiple cases with an else as well. Because again, if you have a default value, you'd use that with an else. And as always, an else has to be the last case, just like it is an if else block in programming land. And so when cu.cost is greater than 1200, it's expensive. When cu.cost is between 1100 and 1200, so I can do some cool um, ranges of values or even unrelated searches as well for that, then it's normal. And finally, if cu.cost is less than 1100, it's cheap. Otherwise, it's free. And so I'll run that same query right here, boom. And I have one free class, I have some normal classes, a cheap class, a normal, and oh, there's an expensive class for programming techniques. And because, you know, it's kind of hard to do, we wanna make sure we take a look at that. And of course, the great name Moolah right there, but we've got it there. So that's how we can do some queries. Again, we're using the case clause, so we can do some examples of how we can extract data from a table. Again, the case clause, we always start with the keyword case. We have that end that matches along with it. And like I have said before, I like to indent in so I can easily read what I've attached to that. So I have that lovely little alignment right there so I can identify what I'm working with. And every case uh, line, we have a when and an associated then. 
So everything you're doing has a when then that goes along with it, when then, and finally we end our, um, if we have one, an else, and that's what ends it all off. And so that's how you can use a case clause using Oracle SQL. I hope this is helpful. Cheers and have a great day. Bye.